Tracyanne Oberman has swapped the screen for the stage as she stars in her own adaption of the famous Shakespeare play, The Merchant of Venice. Now, as the show's West End run continues, Tracy, Tracy joining us this morning. Great to have you with so us. So lovely to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it was nice to chat a bit of Shakespeare. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A, a, a writer ahead of his time, absolutely. ahead of the curve. He really was, wasn't he? So people are intimidated by Shakespeare, and actually they shouldn't be because, well... With, I even get really intimidated by Shakespeare and I wouldn't race to the theatre unless it was one that I, you know, I could really get into. And the great thing about the adaptation that we've done, Merchant of Venice 1936, is it's one and a half hours long, it's really sexy, it's really punchy, it's really political, and it's very easy to understand. So people who, you know, we took it all over the country, people who've never seen a Shakespeare before have been coming back three or four times because it really spoke to them. Merchant of Venice is a, is yeah. a brilliant Shakespeare play, so just give us a kind of an overview. Yeah. So it's a, it's a difficult play. I've always hated it myself. Um, <laughs> I really have. I think it's a really difficult play. It's um, a Jewish moneylender who makes a contract with a Venetian aristocrat for 3,000 ducats and makes a jokey contract to say that if the aristocrat, who's deeply anti-Semitic and has spat at her and, and, and treated her like a dog for many years, the joke is if he can't pay back his money, she wants a pound of his flesh. And for various reasons, he can't pay back the money. He destroys her life and she takes him to court for that pound of flesh. And at the end of the play, spoiler alert, her life is slightly destroyed. But so I've taken it along with Bridget Lyonmore and we've adapted it. We've cut all the fat off it. But we've set it in 1936 against a backdrop of Oswald Mosley and the British Union of Fascists and the Battle of Cable Street that my great grandmother, I based my Shylock on my great grandmother, uh, who came over as an immigrant. And. Um, stood face to face with all her neighbours at the Battle of Cable Street to say to the fascists, you shall not pass. And so the play is, has got a very interactive ending and it's got a feel-good message at this minute in time, which is people are trying to divide us, we're better together, we're stronger together and we're prouder together. Very, very important message right now. It really, really is. It really, really is. And how did the adaption come around then? Who did you sit down? Because you said you hated the play. I Why really don't want, like the play. I think it's it? well. It's true. I've always, I've always looked at it, and I think maybe being the only Jewish girl in the class, and I was forced to read Shakespeare, and then in the, I always say interval, but it was break time. In the break time, um, you know, all the kids were running around, sort of rubbing their hands together, saying, "My duck, it's my daughter." It's a, it's a deeply anti-Jewish and racist play. But instead of taking it out of the canon, I wanted to reclaim it and I wanted people to be able to see it in all its full <laughs> goriness, but also understand what it was saying. And I wanted to set it in a time that really explains what racism meant. Was the adaption quite tricky then? Because it is, it is a complicated... It's one of Shakespeare's more complicated plays. It is a complicated it? play. I mean, lucky audiences, it normally runs at three hours and 45 mm -hmm. minutes. Ours is an hour and a half. I can't stress that long enough. But it's done so well. It's really spoken... You know, it started out as a two-week job that we were doing it at Watford Palace Theatre. It then went up to Manchester. It's just finished a 13-week tour, absolutely sold out around oh, the well country. Done you. Went to the Royal Shakespeare Company, sold out, and the audience have propelled it into the West End. So it is like the project of my life. I wanted it... I saw a production of um, the all-female Julius Caesar at the Donmar, and for many years I'd been thinking, what happens if you take Shylock and you turn it into a woman? What would happen? Mm. And when I saw this all-female Julius Caesar that worked so well, and I really understood it... I started to work on this idea of this very strong matriarch. I had these strong, tough matriarch great-grandmas and great-auntie, Machine Gun Molly, um, Sarah Portugal, who wore a slash... Machine Gun Molly machine was, gun Molly was auntie's tough. auntie's nickname. That was her great-auntie's nickname. Shh. These were tough, strong matriarchs <laughs> in the East End who knew how to cut deals and make yeah. bargains, and I wanted my Shylock to be based on this. You're the first Women female to, to, to play. I think in a major production, yes. Yeah. It's a real groundbreaking... And, you know, the love that the audiences have had for it, I cannot thank you enough. It's, you know, I've taken a year and a half out of my life, out of television and everything else, to put this production on, and it has really spoken to people. So, uh, I was going to... Sorry, Craig, I was just going to say, like, tough women were made in tough times. Tough, what, exactly. Have your family, since watching the show, have they opened up about their struggles? Well, I always grew up with it. You know, I come from a Holocaust family background. I always knew about it. My great-grandmother, Annie who I very much base this character on. She escaped, you know, if you've seen Fiddler on the Roof, she absolutely, she used to watch that at Christmas and go, documentary, documentary, because she grew up with all the pogroms and she, has, she saw her dad nearly being beheaded and she was sent over at 13 on the, on the boat to escape from those pogroms and landed in, in um, the east end of London, lived on a factory floor. And she loved England. She called it the Golden Medina. But these women were tough. Mm. I think, like all immigrant women, to leave your home and to come over and to build a family in a foreign country, 
um, where you don't really speak the language, you're tough. And particularly in the, in the from 1900s onwards, you know, the English like their women to be very decorative and quiet and not very political. But these immigrant women were strong and tough and they knew how to cut a deal and they were often widowed. So that's who I wanted my Shylock to represent. And, and as you said, it, like it, in the Battle of Cable Street itself, it was the whole community oh. that came together. It wasn't just the Jewish community in the fight against fasc Absolutely. fascism, which is the message we want to propel today, right? It, look, we're living in such febrile, difficult times. You know, I myself have got 24-hour security. There's so much Jew hatred and also just hatred because in general. Because of the play? Because of, for many reasons, unfortunately, since the horrific attack um, by Hamas uh, on, on, in Israel and the ongoing war, um, actually, even before Israel had put a foot inside Gaza, there was already, within the first 24 hours, over 300% rise in anti-Jewish hatred. And I just think any, if you're Jewish at all at the moment, or even, you know, any minority, there's just a lot of hate around. So the lesson of the Battle of Cable Street that I was always taught is that they, you know, Oswald Mosley was great friends with Hitler. They got, he got married to Diana Mitford at Goebbels' house. Hitler was his friend. He taught him all about whipping up Jew hatred amongst other working class communities to get a power base. So he had his private army of the British Union of Fascists and they marched on Cable Street to show the Jewish entity they weren't welcome. And the Irish working class neighbours, the English working class, the Afro-Caribbean community, Somalian sailors, trade unionists, dockers, they all stood together and said, if you come for the Jews, you come for us all. Mm -hmm. And they linked arms and they overturned milk floats and they, they pushed the, you know, they did not pass. They the pushed power those of back. Unity. The, the power, power of, of unity. We're yeah. stronger together, better together you and bet. prouder together. Good oh, message. Thank you for coming on. Thank yeah. you yeah. for having me. And good luck um, with the rest of it. Yeah, The Merchant of Venice, 1936, showing at the Criterion Theatre until the 23rd of March. Yeah, at Piccadilly, Criterion Theatre until the 23rd. Do come. Tickets are still available. Lovely. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank good luck with the rest you. of the Thank you so much. Right.